thought I would uh, share some information um, about myself. I have to get rid of this thing because it's going to drive me crazy. So, um, you know, I've posted quite a few times, you know, really just as minimal information as I can give because, you know, no one wants to hear anything depressing, but I think it's worth telling some of my story um, so you can get to know me a little better. And um, so that's what I'm going to do. So I've worked in ultrasound for several years. I, um, I love planning events, so... Um, I've tried my hand at event planning and I've been in a couple of network marketing companies or direct sales companies, which I really like the company and the premise and everything that they stood for. And I found myself in a position where I was putting out a lot of effort, but not seeing the um, harvest, not being able to reap the harvest from what I put out. And, you know, I blame myself for that because I was thinking about what I wanted so much that I was terrified to go out and meet new people and talk to them about business matters. And I had all those fears that, that other people have about being in business or being in a network marketing company or being proud of the company or what are people going to think or, you know, I wasn't able to do this or that and so why would they want to listen to me? All those things went through my head. And I've always wondered why I put so much pressure on myself to perform at such a high level and I think that it's because, well, I think it's for a couple of reasons that kind of became clear to me in the last 12 months or so, I guess. So, first of all, my family is um, of a certain religious belief, and it's a fairly strict one, and so we were the kids on the street that didn't have holidays and didn't do birthdays and didn't do a lot of things, and so immediately from the beginning, we were always different. And I was never angry or upset about it. I just figured, hey, that's the way that things are supposed to be. And when I started joining the working world, I realized how many things we didn't do in our family that other people just kind of took for granted. And some of those were, you know, things that were really, really social events. I've always enjoyed dancing and swimming, and I get along with people well, and I can, you know, have a conversation with just about anyone. But I never liked the idea of walking up to someone or introducing myself to someone and doing a little pitch, you know, do you or anyone you know, blah, 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 or is there any reason why we couldn't blah, 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 you know. And so this past year, I did not, I didn't even know that I felt that way about it, but because I was you know, just brought up in a way that was really actually pretty strict for the most part. Um, somewhere inside of me, I linked that up, that it was a bad thing. Although I will say um, I graduated with a 3.95 GPA from high school. I graduated with a 3.74 GPA from school for ultrasound, and that's with having two kids and commuting several, several miles um, to school and back. So it was an hour and a half to school in the morning, and then it was like 50 minutes back with traffic. And um, I still held down a part-time job at the children's place, and I studied and took care of my kids and my family. So, you know, I was um, – I've always been a hard worker. And then you add on top of that that – I had health issues, and I've had health issues since I was a teenager. Um, it started with that time of the month where I would be doubled over for that week, basically, and then it progressively got worse kind of over the years. 
you know? So I would, I would not be feeling well, and then I would have a breathing problem, and I, I was in private school, and it was a private school where I got all my work for the week, and then I turned it in at the end of the week. I went to school one day a week, and I went through school at an accelerated pace. So I went from sixth to ninth grade in a year and a half. I went from 10th to 12th in like two, I guess it was a little under two years. It was pretty quick, like maybe 18 months. And because I had been sick so much, um, I just, I didn't have any choice because every time I'd start to feel better, I'd go back to school and I'd already be behind a month and a half and that's no good for anyone. So, um, I've always felt like I was different just because of the things, just the way life went. Um, and I'm a really good person. I'm a great person to have as a friend. I'm there for my, my friends and my people and my family. And when I really love you, I love you. And when I don't, I don't. And it takes a lot for me not to like someone. So um, I really enjoy um, event planning. And I really enjoy, I want to say, community, having people around you. And so uh, we moved from Southern California, Mojave Desert area, to Sacramento, which is where we live now currently. I got hired right out of school for OrthoCare at Mercy General Hospital and worked there and worked at several other area hospitals. And um, the very last job that I had at a hospital, I was so sick for so many years going to doctor's appointments trying to figure out what, what was causing me so many issues. And it just got to the point where my employer couldn't keep me employed because I wasn't I wasn't reliable. Not because I was out partying, not because I was, you know, taking time off to go vacation or, you know, whatever, but because I was home in bed sick. And it's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling to have to wonder who you, ha- you know, if you can rely on someone, if you're going to have a job, if you're going to have an income, if you're even going to be able to get out of bed, and if this is ever going to end. And I think that's why I have been so drawn to becoming my own boss because there there would be times that I I couldn't I couldn't go anymore. And thankfully, I'm married to a wonderful man. I've been married for 20 years. I'm so 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 in love and so very thankful for him. I had two gorgeous children, and in that way, I've been completely blessed. But I thought to myself, you know, by the age of 25 or 30, I would be running my own business. And um, so I was attracted to something that would help me have a little more flexibility with my schedule, but be able to um, provide for my family. And so rolling, rolling back to where we're at now, um, one of the things I always wanted to do was go and visit the beaches. I absolutely love the water, although I grew up in the desert. I love being where it's really warm. I love the water, not the rain. Don't like the rain. Don't like, you know, cold weather. Don't like snow. Don't, no, don't like any of that stuff. But I really, 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 really enjoy being, you know, near the water. And so I wanted to go to the Bahamas and and experience that and go to Miami, Florida and experience that and, you know, Hawaii and some of the more popular travel destination places. And, you know, we start to save for it. Uh, As a matter of fact, um, I was working at a hospital and working as a traveler at the same time, which is a person. So in my case, I'm an ultrasound tech. So as a traveler, I would work at one hospital this week or one facility this week and then work at another facility the next week for a couple of days and then, um, you know, kind of bounced around like that. So, um, so I was working as a traveler and working at a hospital and I was saving money so that I could take my family on a Disney World vacation. And I, again, ended up, you know, dealing with health problems because I was working so hard. I had so much to prove that I wasn't taking care of myself, which is, God, that's something most women do, but um, to me, it was a detriment, because if I get a little bit sick, and I don't take care of it, then I end up getting sick for long periods of time, and, you know, so, 
be anyone dealing with that. So um, we ended up doing a Disneyland vacation in Southern California, which was a lot of fun, but it wasn't what I had planned on. And I had planned on purchasing a house, which we did. We bought a house for $479,000 in Natomas, California. And it was a gorgeous house. It was the home that I had dreamed of. I thought we would stay there forever. And I ended up having to have an emergency hysterectomy. Um, I guess it was about six months after we lost the house. And we lost it. Um, I couldn't go back to work. I couldn't stand up. I couldn't I couldn't work the hours that I had been doing in order to qualify for the house. And that left us in, you know, tatters and shambles. And I always thought that I was pretty resilient when it comes to overcoming these things or just getting past them. But this past year it's become pretty um, obvious that even though I didn't let it stop me from going back and getting another job or going back to work or doing what I needed to do. It definitely was impactful on my life. And so um, I'm in a position now where I'm growing a travel agency from home, which is um, an enhancement to the event planning portion of my business. And I get to show other people how to be business owners, but I don't have to do it you know, five days a week in order to be successful or seven days a week in order to be successful, at least my definition of success. And so as I, as I go through learning about myself, which by the way, if you're in any company, I don't care if you start a business and you're a hairdresser, I don't care if you start a business and you cut lawns for a living, you know, whatever it is, when you start your own business, you have to do some development of yourself inwardly in order to be able to promote yourself, promote your business, and have the confidence to do those things. And every business I've ever been in, I've learned a ton about myself and about what I believe and what I like and what I don't like. And so now I'm I'm in this business, and it's got – there is the very, very real possibility – of coming in on the ground floor in this company and growing an area, or you know, I live in Sacramento, so growing this area to an amazing um, income and opportunity for tons of people around me. And now, if you guys know anything about me, I'm not, I'm not the one that has to have you know a twenty million dollar mansion or, or something like that. But I do need to be able to take care of my family, and so um, I'm now working with this company and inviting people to take a look. And so I'm, I'm having to learn how to talk with people while I'm out and about and about business things. That has been challenging for me. And so as I do this, you guys will see quite a few posts from me. You guys are going to see updates and you're going to see um, – you're going to see a lot of positive information coming – from my way, even though I went through all those things in the past, and even though my health is still a struggle right this minute, I s- don't want to end up uh, not fu- not following my dreams, not fulfilling my dreams. I'm looking, I'm trying to look for the words that kind of encompass what I'm trying to say. And so I'm sorry about all the uhs and ums, but sometimes you need pretty powerful words to... Um, get your point across so that people can un- can understand what it is that you're saying. And so pray for me, keep me in your thoughts, and my family as well, because when I get sick, they get sick. Um, it's a scary situation to have a loved one that has a health issue. But um, I hope that what you heard or what you hear is that I'm constantly learning and that I'm growing as a human being and also um, that I'm not giving up and that I'm fighting. And so I implore you to ask yourself the question, what is it that I'm not doing that I feel this calling towards? What am I giving up? Because for me, I was giving up time with my family. I was giving up I was giving up the ability to just function as a normal human being so that I could work all of these hours to have money and then, you know, we still didn't have any money. Even though I was working all those hours, we were making it, but we were spending it as fast as we were making it. 
And when you're unhappy, for us, for me, spending was my life. We were either eating or shopping, eating, shopping, or working, eating, eating, shopping, or working. And that's no way to live. It just, for me, it's not fulfilling. So I would encourage you that if there's something that you haven't done or something that you feel is calling to you, give it a try. Give it a start. Let people around you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. You know, be heartfelt and genuine and so that people not only will understand, but maybe can see a little bit of themselves in that story and understand, even though to them it's just fascinating, your story, to you it's your life. And before you know it, you'll be in your rocking chair in old age and you'll be saying, my God, I wish that I would have. I wish I should have. I could have. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. And I don't want that for my life. So, um, yeah, uh, that's that's all I wanted to say tonight. Um, I'm, I'm using this as time to get to understand how streaming works and see if I like it and, you know, carry it on from there. And so thanks for letting me babble on and and talk about who I am and try to get my thoughts together. So, um, I love you all. I, I hope that you know that I think you guys are the greatest. And as my page grows, as my business grows, as I grow, as I develop, I just want to take you guys all with me. So, that is as honest and real as I can be. So, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for listening, and um, good night. I might have to get tissue. I'm so dripping. Um. <coughs>